Welcome to labminutes.com. In this video, we'll be looking at Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol, or VRRP. If you have watched our HSRP video, you will see a lot of similarities uh, with VRRP in this video. The main differences are the VRRP is a standard protocol as opposed to HSRP that's Cisco proprietary. VRRP uses a multicast group address of 224.0018 and the protocol number 112. The, the other differences are the low interval that by default is one second and the preemption for VRRP is also enabled by default. Other than that, the configuration and the concept are the very much the same as HSRP. In this lab, we will have two routers VR, running VRRP router 1 and router 2. We're going to be running a continuous ping from a host.32 pinging a WAN router loopback interface. So you can see right now it's timing out. Now let's start with our configuration. On router R1, we're going to go under the fast ethernet 00. zero. And command is a secret yes VRRP. And the group number is between 1 through 255. So here we do 4. And we start off with description VLAN 4. Next is VRRP 4. Give it priority. By default, it's 100, just like HSRP. We will do 110 here. And VRRP4, preempt, give it a delay, preempt, minimum 10. So wait 10 seconds before, or af actually after the interface comes up before it starts preempting the existing master. Next is VRRP4. We can adjust the advertised uh, packets interval to um, going to go millisecond and 300 millisecond. And last, we're going to activate the VRRP with the configuration of the virtual IP which is 4.1 and immediately or almost immediately you can see the router R1 has become a master and our ping here in the background is also getting reply as well that now the gateway.1 4.1 has become available you do show VRRP and this router is a master for VLAN 4. Virtual IP 4.1. Note the virtual MAC address, that's the format, and the last two numbers are the group numbers. Advertisement interval, 300 millisecond. Preemption enabled with delay, priority 110. The master router is itself, as noted by local and that's the down interval. So we're going to take the config and we're going to copy that over to R2. That's the same, make sure that go last. Uh, same interval, we're not going to do delay. So going to remove that priority. It's going to have lower priority. Copy. And paste. Again, almost immediately the router took the backup role. Show VRRP. The router's the backup. Although we didn't put or enter the preem preemption command, preemption is enabled by default. 
Guardi's 105, and it's also see a master of a dot two. Show BRP brief. Okay, state backup. It knows the master again, address, and the group number. All right. Now we have um, packet capture set up to look at the R1 F00 interface. Uh, so let's start up Wireshark. And we can take a look what the packet looks like. Okay, we can see a lot of packets here. So we're going to stop, pick one packet, and we'll start from top to bottom at the IP header per um, IP header. It's the destination MAC address 2240018. Moving down, you see protocol VRRP, or as noted by hex number 70. So if you grab a calculator. X70. That's a decimal of uh, 112, which is the protocol number of VRRP. Okay, moving down to the payload. So this is a version two. It's an advertisement packet. It contains the priority of R1. Authentication is a no authentication, and there's checksum and the virtual IP. Okay. Next, we, go, we are going to enable authentication. And we're going to do it by keychain. Here will be key VRRP, key one, key string, lap minutes. Okay, go under the interface, VRP, 4, authentication, MD5. Well, actually, let's take a step back. You can see there's an option of plain text and MD5. Here we do MD5. You can specify the key string right here, or you can tie it to a keychain. And we've created earlier a key name key VRRP. As soon as that command is entered, the router R1 is complaining about bad authentication because that the R2 has not been enabled with authentication yet. So let's do that real quick. Just copy the keychain, put that over in R2. Four of then and the five key chain key VRP and now they're talking again. Okay, let's take another look at the Wireshark capture and see what has been changed after the authentication has been enabled. Wait, stop. Get the packet. Let's compare that with the previous packet. Yep, you can see everything is pretty much the same except the authentication or auth type. Before it was no authentication, now it has become unknown. Okay. The last thing we're going to do is to try interface tracking. First, we'll create track object one. Here we'll do interface. We're going to be tracking the serial interface to pointing towards the WAN router. 
So if that goes down, we want the VRRP to flip over to R2 to be a master. And we'll do line protocol. Okay, line protocol is up. Now we go under VRRP for track object. And I guess this is also another difference between VRRP and HSRP. HSRP actually allows you to specify the track interface directly under the um, standby command, but here VRRP you need to tie that to an object. Increment, we're going to do 10, so we're going to from 110 it's going to be decremented to 100 which is less than 105 on the R2 side so that should be good. You show VRRP again and here so track object 1 state is up so we're going to go ahead and shut down 011 on R1 uh, 0110 0 rather on R1 shut immediately R1 is now a backup. Looking at our ping in, in the background, we lost one ping in the process. If you do show VRRP brief, itself is a backup. The master is now 4.3 or that's R2. To show VRRP again, track object state is now down. The priority has been decremented to 100. And R2 is now a master. Thank you for watching labminutes.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.